Yo, you're listening to No Limits, a PlayStation podcast. Take it away, Jim. Hello, everyone. Hope you liked that new intro. My name is Taylor, and I'm joined by my co-hosts, Brianna and Sam. Hmm? But his name's Ethan. A Texas mm-hmm. version. And he's not British. <laughs> Texas version. Gained a few and pounds. <laughs> and he's in Texas. <laughs> and his room looks different. Hello. You're joined by Brianna and Ethan, host of most well-known for Project X Talk, our sister mm-hmm. Xbox show over with Kevin the Muffin Mon. And but uh, Sam couldn't make it last minute today because he had meetings that he made up to avoid the show. So, yeah, it's it's just Mm -hmm. um, (laughs) us today. But we got Ethan here and he's been having a hell of a time with PlayStation recently that we'll definitely get into in a second. But um, please remember, you can find No Limits of PlayStation podcast over at YouTube.com slash Save the Game Media every Tuesday. And while you're over there, make sure to subscribe to the channel. If you'd rather listen to audio, we are on all your favorite podcast services and would love if you could drop us a five-star review. It helps us grow. If you'd like to interact with us more, including sending in questions, please join the Discord with the link in the show notes. And if you want to support us and get early access to all Save the Game Media content, head over to patreon.com slash save the game media and choose a tier that's right for you. Just like our current patrons, Bucky Blue, Hopple, Alpaca Tom, SAZ, and I'm going to call this the Brianna Bunch. We have, <laughs> we have fabulous Brianna, who's already a patron for recording. Brianna's mom, who was already a patron last week as well. But some new patrons. We have Brianna's brother and Brianna's wife. And no, I will not elaborate. And please go to patreon.com slash save the game media to check it out once again. Or YouTube and check out our Discord. Links are all in the show notes. And lastly, before we start rec- uh, our show today... We get the meat potatoes. We have a God of War Ragnarok giveaway we're currently running for at Save the Game Media. To enter, tweet us or show us in the Discord that you are either subscribed to our YouTube channel or review No Limits with a five star rating on Apple or Spotify. You get one entry for each of those things, offering non patrons a maximum of two entries in the giveaway. And for patrons, you earn double the entries for each of those actions. So you can get a maximum of four entries in our giveaway. So have at it, guys. And we'll be picking the winner from a wheel, uh, which has we'll have your name and the amount of entries you have. We'll have each of your own slices on the wheel accordingly. So, yeah. And that ends about a month from now, I believe, October 3rd. So with that said, how are we doing, guys? Good. Solid. Awesome. <laughs> are you gonna call Agreed. somebody out <laughs> um no i was just saying if you're gonna elaborate before i like interrupt um no nope. i am doing okay uh i'm like smack dab like i'm mid i'm mid right now i had like kind of a crazy weekend okay um and that kind of tired me out so um yeah but we're back in california back to the ugh, grind tomorrow so <laughs> yeah nice how are yes. you, Taylor? Thanks. And as we record this, it is Labor Day. So we all have a holiday uh, off today. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm doing pretty good. I got some work done this morning, went on a walk. And now I'm here. So pretty productive day so far. And yeah, excited to record this show. And doing well. How about you, Ethan? <laughs> doing good. I've had a long weekend. Lots of money being spent on Halloween decorations. Um not my choice, but you know what? You got you got to oh, make yeah. the wife happy. And when you buy um, a house, forget about it. Oh yeah, it's over with. But my bank account's going to be drained. It's going to be great for every holiday, not just Halloween. So oh, oh, she does for what's her favorite holiday to decorate? Halloween's for? her favorite holiday, but okay. Christmas Christmas is my favorite holiday. So I'm going to make sure the house is decorated well for Christmas. Uh, I'm going to be the one on the roof putting up the lights and and going crazy and probably hurting myself at some Don't point. Don't fall. Don't uh, fall. I pr- I will. It, it's going to happen, but that's okay. Uh, but yeah, I'm excited to get into this because uh, I've recently come into possession of a PS5 and I want to talk about it. Yes. So please just 
let us know, take as much time as you want, Ethan. Let us know how your journey with the PS5 has been so far over these past few weeks. Uh, it's been great for the most part. Uh, I've been betrayed a couple times <laughs> because of uh, things that I'm used to on Xbox, not being on PlayStation, like uh, refunds. No or no, refunds. Yeah. Refunds are the big thing. I think there is quick resume, or am I not thinking? Yeah, it was like rest mode. It's not quite quick resume. Yeah, it seems every time I go into rest mode, it it like breaks my console almost because I can't turn it back on with the controller, and it has to like, do the whole repairing your hard drive thing, which makes me oh, sweat every weird. time. But I I know it's not a, a big issue. But uh, so I just started turning it off more. But yeah, um, overall the games I've been playing have been incredible. I'm doing exactly what I said I would do with it, and that's going to the backlog of PlayStation titles that I never played because I haven't been a part of the ecosystem since the PS2. Um, so, so far I've platinumed Ghost of Tsushima, Astro's Playroom, of course, and uh, Marvel's Spider-Man. So those are the three games that I've platinumed so far. And I'm wow. working now on The Last of Us Part 1, um, which is very strange for me because I am not a fan of zombies. If anyone listened to Project X talk, you'll know that I'm terrified of zombies. Um, but this game has been good because it has a lot of good accessibility options that allow me to not skip the areas with zombies, but sort of make it a lot easier on myself. Uh, but overall, this game's absolutely incredible. Myself and uh, Muffin Mon are going to be doing a uh, spoiler cast. Oh, the kitty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah she was like meowing at my feet. She was like Aww. freaking out. We haven't seen each other this morning. She slept under the bed, so she had poor to... baby. But I'm yeah, me, that. me and Kevin are going to be doing a full on spoiler cast, so I don't want to get too crazy into it. I think I do want to say, though, right off the bat that this is a five out of five game, almost near perfect. I mean, it's absolutely incredible. I think if you're a huge fan of The Last of Us, I've watched a lot of gameplay of the original 2013 and the 2014 remaster. Yeah, this is me. clearly the way to play this game. Yep. Uh, this is absolutely amazing. The environment is stunning. The lighting is beautiful. Um, the characters, their performances are only enhanced by the upgraded graphics and, and facial animations. Um, in my opinion, from looking at gameplay in the past, Ellie was sort of in that uncanny valley area with her eyes and, and how she looked in that game. So I think now it, it looks a lot better. It looks more realistic. Um, and I think the thing that I love about this game the most is definitely how the environment feels like another character in the game. Um, it it tells a story throughout the whole thing. And I think where this game shines the most is not necessarily in the middle of crazy combat, but when you're doing those in between areas where you're going into different houses or garages and looting stuff and, and it, every single location in this game feels so handcrafted. Nothing feels mm -hmm. like just random clutter thrown around. It seems like every house you go into, it tells a story of the people that live there. So like if you're in a house in the suburbs, you see the child's room. Maybe you find an artifact explaining how they ran away. Uh, you see suitcases on the bed and you see dra dressers and drawers oh, yeah. flipped over because people are trying to get their stuff together. There, there is one series of notes that I'm very interested to hear you talk about in the spoiler cast. Okay, awesome. Um, and then you, you go to the college area and you go into some of their do dorms and you see a Nathan Drake and a Jack and Daxter, you know, plushy and you see a gaming setup and everything. So it, it seems like every location sort of tells this story and it really acts like another character along with the big cast of awesome characters that this game already has. So it's absolutely right. beautiful. I'm going to go way more in depth in the spoiler cast. So I just wanted to give you guys a little nugget there that I love this game. It's absolutely incredible. Awesome. I, I'm really I glad that you that. like it. Yeah. yeah, like genuinely, I was like, "You're like, I went through all of that, and I hate it." <laughs> <laughs> well, my I will. It wasn't say, possible, but <laughs> my nerves are shot. Like, yeah. it, they, I'm definitely like, like I'm jumping at things now because I'm so scared of zombies. But um, I'm I'm gonna be playing some goofy games later on. Uh, well, actually, I lied. I'm gonna be playing the Last of Us DLC Left Behind after this, so I'm still gonna be jumpy for a little while but uh i'm definitely gonna have to take a break after this from zombie games yeah for sure cool. i think it, that's what i was gonna say it's probably a good idea to wait until like yeah. wait a little bit to play two and then even i heard two is like for a completionist like me that wants to get a platinum it's probably around a 40 hour game it's pretty oh, big, dude yeah. it took me almost that long and i didn't even do all that i'm just really slow oh i was shocked God. at how long it took me it was like probably 35 hours that's wild because i've spent i think total 14 hours playing yeah. this the and second game is way bigger than the first yeah and i'm shot like i can't imagine investing 40 hours of my time well, into this world <laughs> the last of us 2's gameplay is so tight like it might be the tightest third over the shoulder third person gameplay i've ever mm. um part, yeah. i've ever participated in in a third person shooter 
single mm-hmm. player experience. So like if it wasn't that much of a pedigree for the combat, I don't think I would have been able to handle it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I saw previews of two and stuff and how you can go prone. There's a lot of different weapons and yeah. customization options There's for the so weapons. Stuff, yeah. I actually kind of enjoyed how minimalistic I, sort of the combat yeah. was in this game. How it was literally just you could do a sneak approach or you could do a run and gun approach. I really liked how it, uh, the environment's really set up for you to do whatever you want in in that aspect. And I And I actually really enjoyed how tight and how minimalistic this sort of combat was in the first one. Yeah, awesome. Cool. So what have you what have you been uh, playing, Bree? Uh I've been playing hangout with my family. <laughs> Aww. What did were you you platinum last night though? <laughs> um last night, what did I stream? I streamed Genshin. Yeah. Um I was kind of like out of it, like I was tired, but I like I specifically flew back that at the time that I did so that way I could stream. So I was like I have to stream. Um, like I didn't have to stream, but you know what I mean? Like it was like, I, I came back to stream, so I should. Mm-hmm. So it's just kind of like really tired and just playing Genshin, hanging out with a bunch of people. Um, how's your family then? My family's pretty good. My sister's just, um, she's a senior in college. So, mm-hmm. uh, or college, pff, high school. What the heck? Okay. Yeah. I was a little confused um, for a second. <laughs> now she's, she's in high school. Um, so yeah, so she's, she's doing good. She, uh, she's hanging out with friends and stuff. Um, she's a lot, uh, she's like a super social butterfly. And okay. then my mom's pretty good. Just my mom, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was like good to see everybody. I got to see like, what was really cool is like, um, because it was a wedding, I got to see a lot of my dad's side of the family. Um, they're pretty scattered. Um, so it was like, some of them are from like Lebanon. Some of them are from like Massachusetts. Mm. Some of them are from like, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like it's Lebanon. just like, Oh, yeah, like the country Lebanon. I remember you mentioned mm-hmm. this. Her, you're half Lebanese, right? Okay. No, I'm actually half Jordanian. Oh. Mm-hmm. Um, It's a little bit, it's a confusing, it's not super confusing, but it's just basically, so it's my paternal um, grandfather's sister married somebody that was Lebanese. Um, okay. And so it's like that half of the family or that part of the family. So it was like, yeah, it was my second cousin that got married. And awesome. yeah, it was really good to see everybody. I like, I, I, finished my duties on tuesday before i left on wednesday but i haven't really played video games since then so no need to more important things yeah that's true that's true weddings are fun they definitely are oh yeah you know what they are and i yeah it was also like we had like a a good amount of drama too so we got like the we got the the drama so we have the dramatic stories to tell later we also Mm -hmm. got like the, the cuteness um my cousin danced like with her grandpa and it was genuinely like one of the cutest things I've ever Aww. seen. Like <laughs> it was, it was, it was great. Something my parents told me about weddings. I didn't believe them until I went to my first wedding this past June where I got married. No, I'm just kidding. No, I didn't get married. Um, <laughs> is that the hors d'oeuvres are better than the main course. And it was completely oh, true. They always are. Yeah. It was that, that hold true at the, at, at the wedding you just went to. Um, so they didn't really have anything like that. It was just, so so they, they, so we had the ceremony and then they opened the bar and then, um, they just had like dinner after that. Oh, okay. Um, and then, um, after that they brought donuts out and that's where I was. Mm. One of my cousins was like, Brie, come dance with me. And I was like, girl, donuts first dance later <laughs> what kind of donuts <laughs> they were just like an assortment so there was like chocolate um and then there was like the sugar covered donut and then like glazed donuts and stuff mm. like that it was just like a random assortment of donuts but like i just really love donuts a lot um, oh, yeah. so i was like i was like i have my priorities and, and then i brought the donut with me to the dance floor oh yeah i was like i'll come dance with you but i had to get the donut dancing first. with the donut so put it in your dress <laughs> i mean safekeeping Exactly. No, they were they were dancing with a can of beer. So I was like, if you yeah. have your beer dancing, then I'm gonna get my donut. Yeah. You know? Right. <laughs> Are we talking open bar? Like nobody no, has to pay. Open. Oh. Um, open it was like nobody had to happens. pay. No, nobody had to pay. Oh, okay. But it was like a limited thing. So they had like yep. I think two or three different kinds of beer, and then like mm-hmm. two kinds of wine. There was like one white wine and one red wine, or something like that. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. That's a part. And they also had like stuff. lemonade and water. Mm. love yeah. it i think that that's like a good happy medium because like open bars like when it's a full open bar can be like literally like tens of thousands of dollars oh yeah we had an open bar we had an open bar at my wedding and it was 
it was wild. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was a good time. <laughs> That's good. That's great. Awesome. All right. Well, without further ado, we can start getting into the news for this week. So starting off, we have a gauntlet of PlayStation Plus games coming to all tiers of the service finally after a premium tier drought for the past few months. Sam has been DMing me saying he's very angry and sad about his life because there's no PS premium <laughs> games. But starting off, we have coming to the essential tier for the month of September. So listeners who are new to the PS plus premium tiers, this was PS plus essentials. Now it used to be just regular PS plus in the monthly games you'd get. So all PS Plus subscribers will receive Need for Speed Heat on PS4, Grand Blue Fantasy Versus, um, and Toem, I think that's how you pronounce it, an indie game called Toem, for the month of September. And extra and premium subscribers get all those, plus Deathloop, the PS5 edition, Assassin's Creed Origins PS4 version, PS4 version of Watch Dogs 2, Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 on PS4, Speared Fair for a well edition on PS4, Chicory, a colorful tale, PS4, Monster Energy Supercross, the official video game, number five for PS4 and five, Alex Kidd and Miracle World Deluxe for PS4 and five, Rabbids Invasion, the interactive TV show on PS4, Rabbids Legends on PS4, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, the game complete edition on PS4, which is a personal highlight, I think, on this list for me. And I haven't played that game yet, but I want to. And uh, for the premium tier subscribers, there's new classic titles, including um, Siphon Filter 2 in the PS1. We got the original Siphon Filter a month or two ago. The Sly Collection for PS3, which would be streaming. Sly Cooper Thieves in Time, which would be streaming. Bentley's Hack Pack on PS3 would be streaming. Toy Story 3 for PSP, which I think is also streaming. Are PSP titles streaming, or is it just PS3? I think it's PSP as well. I think it's I PSP could be wrong, well. but and Kingdom of Paradise from PSP. This comes to us from the PlayStation blog. So, Ethan, I'll hand it off to you as our special guest for this show. What are yeah. your thoughts on this big new list of games coming to the service for next month? This is a great drop. You know, you guys know I'm a huge fan of Ubisoft, so Watch Dogs Two and Assassin's Creed Origins are great games. I really recommend people go out and give those a shot. Uh, Origins is probably my favorite out of the modern trilogy of Assassin's wow. Creed games that uh, okay. Ubisoft has put out. Um, Watch Dogs Two is the better of the Watch Dogs, in my opinion, out of uh, the three that they've come out with. Uh, Watch Dogs Two is really well done. Deathloop, I'm excited for. I don't know if I'm going to play it on the PS5. Or if I'm just going to wait for it to come to Game Pass so that I can play it on there because I got so many other games I got to play for PlayStation. Uh, but it, it's a pretty good drop this month. And uh, I want to talk about the premium for a bit. I, I've been listening to a bunch of PlayStation podcasts recently trying to catch up on all the lore and get more involved in the community. Um, I, I heard the Toy Story 3 that is going to be just the PSP version. They're not giving us the PS3 version. Um, and then for the Sly Collection and Sly Cooper Thieves in Time, I heard that was already on uh the previous what was it ps now playstation would, now yes yeah so is is that true was that already on there and I they're so. just taking stuff away and giving it I, back to yeah you? i wasn't subscribed to ps now but those looked familiar from the list so maybe that is yeah yeah so that's kind of it's a little weird that they're doing it that way hopefully they can just open it up and give everything back that they took away that's kind of silly to me <laughs> yeah that is weird but for the extra tier i think this is a good deal for this month extra tier you get you're getting a lot of really good yeah. games a really really solid experiences that are going to take a lot of hours um yeah so yeah, exciting that's a sweet spot yeah that's what i'm so sub to right now what mm -hmm. about you brie um i am pretty excited about this list um specifically uh shikari and toem um, I think like those are probably going to be the two that I play from here. Um, Deathloop, as cool as I really do think Deathloop looks so cool, so fun, but it's just, I really don't think that I'm personally going to like playing it. Um, so as much as I love the aesthetic and like the idea behind it, I, I don't think I'll be playing that okay. one. That's why I'm with Persona. Yeah. Persona is so fun. Yeah, I don't like turn-based combat and I like Persona, so... Oh, okay. Oh, That's well. good to hear because I hate turn-based combat and I really want to play Persona. Because I might get the Switch port of Persona 5 just because I'm a loser. <laughs> I mean, that's not... I, Switch is great. You're I know, but I already played it on PS4 that. and didn't like it and still have it on PS4, but I'm like, eh, mm. Switch <laughs> will make it all better, right? Come on, yeah, I don't, think so. don't do that to yourself. <laughs> I'm not, I don't think I'm going to do that to myself. No. Yeah. 
that, I mean, it's just like there, there's some finally like we're getting like a solid like release here. And I think hopefully we see like another solid release. Like hopefully we see some like actual horror games next month for Halloween. Right. If they're Maybe not on Steam, I'm going to be real upset. Some Alan Wake, some Silent Hills. That seems like something that would be good on here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Dead Space. Be a good time. Well, actually, yeah, maybe it's Dead Space. I know it's on EA Play by Proxy Game Pass, but... Yeah. Um, cool. Yeah, I think solid list, other than the uh, cut-and-paste pre- premium titles from PS Now <laughs> that were there, but they're back nonetheless. And awesome. And how about... Uh, Ethan, take it away for our new second story here for the new God of War Ragnarok trailer. You want me to do a hosting thing? Oh, this is new territory. Yeah, this is what we do. So we go around the barn for different news stories, and each of the hosts covers the story, and we come back around. All right, cool. Uh, All right, so new God of War Ragnarok trailer released by Game Informer lets you play with your food. (laughs) That's the quote there. Is that your quote, or is that Game Informer? That's what they say in the video. So, like, literally, the Game Informer is Game Informer's... Actually, Game Informer, I think, quoting the developers, saying Mm. that their combat now lets you, quote, play with your food. Yeah, so if anyone missed it, Game Informer did a big uh, cover story about God of War Ragnarok. You get a bunch of new gameplay stuff that you can go check out on YouTube. Uh, So we're going to go through all the different stuff here. Uh, Combat design is inspired by the play with your food game philosophy. Uh, Using the blades as a grappling hook, launching opponents with new arm shields. Uh, Arteus ne- can now destroy obstructions in addition to Wait, his Wait, did you say other- Arteus? Ar- Atreus. 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 I read that wrong. <laughs> See, this is why Kevin doesn't let me do it. Atreus <laughs> can now destroy obstructions in addition to his other duties in the previous game, like hitting enemies and summoning spectral supports. Uh, new signature abilities now added for Kratos, mapped to the triangle button, infuses his blades with fire or Leviathan axe with ice, depending on which he's wielding for a signature elemental attack, which that was a really cool highlight in the gameplay stuff, seeing the different elemental attacks you can do. And uh, new reptilian mobs called Grims. Uh, so yeah, we got a big update from Game Informer. What do you guys think about it? I'm excited. Uh, I'm let's excited. start with uh, Taylor. You, you want to start it off? Thanks for sure. Yeah, please be excited. Uh, I, I, I think it's cool seeing the traversal with the blades. And for me, the standout was the signature abilities, just adding to the move set and the arm shields as well. I like that approach a little more than the dedicated shield you had. in. I guess it was dedicated. I guess it was also an arm shield, but like rather than one dedicated shield in this new gameplay trailer, it looks like you have two coming from, it looked like both wrists that you can make with your arms, mm-hmm. um, that will just make it more fun. And yeah, just it's more of God of War 2018's combat as a base that they're just building on, and that's fine by me. So many people were talking about, so many fans were kind of holding out cry for, um, oh, the sequel needs to be isn't different enough. Blah blah blah. I'm like, no, it doesn't. God of War 2018 was a masterclass mm-hmm. of a game. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And they can iterate on some things about that combat. Yeah. And so they did. And yeah. that's what they're doing here. And I'm excited for um, November 9th. So, yeah, yeah. It, I, I completely agree with you. Just give me an enhanced version of God of War 2018 combat and I'm there. I'm specifically excited about the elemental attacks. I saw at one point in the video, uh, he threw the axe and it hit one of these gremlins or, or whatever they call it. And it froze him in place. And then you got to jump down yep. with the blades and hit him, and it scattered his ice everywhere. It, it was so cool. Uh, lots of really cool little... Uh, gameplay updates for this but still has that amazing combat from god of war 2018 but brianna what do you think about all these new updates um i'm actually this is the first time i like try and avoid this kind of like not this kind of stuff but like i'm trying to i haven't watched the video i was just gonna like let let like us read it and so that way i can like wait to see this kind of stuff okay Um, but yeah so i think this all sounds super cool um Honestly, when I heard play with your food, I got really excited because I really like cooking in games, but <laughs> it's not breath of the wild cooking. cooking. Sorry. I was gonna yeah. say it has a breath of the wild cooking weekend now. <laughs> um, so yeah, I got excited for a second there. But yeah, no, it, this all sounds great. Um, I absolutely trust them to do what's best with the combat. Like the combat from 2018 was great. So if we're getting like because if you think about like The Last of Us One versus Two, um, we kind of had the same combat just upgraded. Um, and then if it's like the same thing where it's like the first God of War, but just upgraded and like more streamlined than like we're in for a special treat. So, yes. And I, I respect you for avoiding it 
avoiding the trailer just to let it come organically yeah. when you can when you can experience the game in a couple months yeah that's gonna yeah. be good awesome yeah cool all right so take it away for the for next story brie Okie dokie. Um, Sony acquires the mobile game developer Savage Game Studios to the new PlayStation Studio mobile division. Um, the CEO states, quote, we made this deal because we believe that PlayStation Studios uh, leadership respects our vision for how we can best operate and succeed because they, are, they too are not afraid to take chances. All of that, plus the ability to potentially tap into a PlayStation's amazing catalog of IP and the fact that we will benefit from any kind of support that only they can provide. The harder question to answer would be why not? Um, this and PC add on to um, Sony's pre-existing commitment to, to bring single-player narrative-driven experiences. Um, Savage Game Studios is working on a, quote, new unannounced AAA mobile live action service game. So, Yeah, nice. So I'm, I'm a fan of the... Uh, I'm a fan of new, new mobile game developers. Interesting new triple a mobile game not so much of a fan of new triple a mobile live action service mobile game <laughs> yeah it's uh i'm like can we leave that to bungie and destiny uh but but nonetheless this is kind of interesting to me i've never seen sony really make a push on the mobile game front um but obviously they're going to so i'm curious what they make up i'm curious if it's a new ip or if they're building on an existing ip and making it a mobile spinoff um but i don't know what do you think? My guess would be that it's going to be a known IP. Um, it may be mm -hmm. like an iteration on a known IP, but that would be my guess, especially since they're just starting. Um, I don't think that they would like launch like a whole new franchise um, under the Sony name uh, for mobile, at least not yet, um, since they're just kind of dipping their toe in the water. But that's just I don't know. I This doesn't really do like anything for me. It's like interesting news. But like as far as like a live act, like you said, live action service game is like. I. I wouldn't play that on my phone mm -hmm. for the most part. Like I would yeah. just be on my PC if I well, was playing a live action service game. I will say Infinity Blade, for those who know, oh, Infinity Blade is was so literally a triple A gaming experience on your iPod touch in like 2010, 2011. Huh. This game was like the pinnacle of mobile gaming and mobile combat. I swear to God, if they could do something like that, <laughs> I am going to use my phone a hell of a lot more for games. Yeah, I that's, doubt that's the case. That game was so good. Did you ever get? Did you ever do like the opposite, like where it's like in that tutorial of it, and you um let the, uh, it's like it's like you're supposed to take up you're supposed to hit block, but if you don't hit block, you can go into like a negative version of the game. It's like, like my negative favorite color palette. No, no, like so. Basically, what it is is you're when you're going through the tutorial, and it kind of shows you how to like use the tap controls. It's like use this to attack, use this to block, or whatever. Right. You're fighting that like boss, and you're supposed to block, and so it's like use block. So you hit block, and when you hit block, the enemy swings on you, and you're supposed to hold it. You can actually drop block at the last second for the enemy to hit you. Um, and so when you take that hit, you can actually die from that point in the game. And then you go into, I can't remember what the mode is called, but you go into a different mode, which instead of like leveling up like one, two, three, you go negative numbers. So it's like negative one, negative two, negative three. And it's a completely different gaming experience. Negative and I was lines. Wow. Yeah. And I was always so shocked because it's not just like the same game, but like different. It's like, it's almost like a completely different mode. And I, I loved that they did that because it's That's like amazing. so hard to find that mode. That's incredible. I, I love that game. Yeah, I need to figure out a way to emulate this on PC and replay just for nostalgia and to do that again. Mm -hmm. That'd be awesome. Cool. That's Thanks really for cool. that tidbit. So, yeah. what do you think, Ethan, after Sony makes their uh, new Infinity Blade? Um, <laughs> I'm not a mobile gamer. I, I have absolutely no interest in it, but I do think it makes sense for these big companies to be buying these mobile studios we saw xbox recently acquire king you, i i think these guys realize that hey the mobile market exists it generates a lot of revenue and we might as well put our first party mobile games uh, out ourselves and publish yep. them mm -hmm. ourselves and and that makes absolute sense so this is just sony getting their version of king and i think like brianna said this is going to be first party titles that already exist um this is going to be stuff like the last of us mobile spinoff this is going to be god of war spinoff this is going to be stuff like that um, I don't. I don't see any big. Tri I don't. I don't see a big new IPs coming out of a mobile division from PlayStation. Um, I, I saw Brianna make it a face there. She doesn't want this stuff, but it's generating. Yeah, I don't a want revenue. them to touch the. No, yeah, I just don't want them to touch those franchises. Like, leave no, those I PlayStation. know. <laughs> I absolutely agree with you. I don't want them to. 
I absolutely agree with you, but you know it's going to generate a lot I of know. revenue, and they can use that revenue to reinvest. And I, and I also love it how every time Sony makes a move for anything, they have to say that we're still committed to single player narrative driven experiences. That's I just feel like to make Twitter make Twitter be quiet. Exactly. I, I always just find that funny because it's like it, that's still what PlayStation's going to be. PlayStation's not leaving that, but they have to say that every time because people are just going to start crying on Twitter. It's just going to be a mobile studio now. <laughs> no, it's not going to be that way. But, uh, uh, what good on they Sony. Do? They're like Last of Us Candy Crush. <laughs> oh my God. It, you know what's sad is I, I can see it. I, I can see oh. it happening. <laughs> oh god that would be awful you're like the different zombie types or like the different like icons oh, or whatever <laughs> <laughs> match three clickers in a row <laughs> yeah oh god it's gonna be, be awful. terrible but you know hopefully if they generate a lot of revenue with this it goes back into their their different studios and they can make better games for us so that's always good cool and awesome so this next story i know brie is going to be happy for but sony and well, maybe not the Tencent part, but let me let me digress. Sony and Tencent <laughs> acquire a combined 30.34% of From Software. Kadokawa Group, or sorry, Kadokawa Group. Bree, am I butchering that? Kadokawa. Kadokawa. No, Kadokawa, you got it. Yeah, okay. The parent company of From Software is investing in quote global media, a global media mix with technology. They're trying to diversify the revenue mediums from games, web services, to education, to publications. And Sony and Tencent just took almost a third of the pie. So, Bree, as a from software enthusiast yourself, and as a huge, well, I'm a huge Bloodborne fan, but I think you're a bigger from software fan than I am. What are you, how does this make you feel? What do you, what do you think of this? Well, I'm very conflicted because Sony, great. Tencent, maybe not so great. <laughs> um, Tencent is kind of poopy. Um, just poopy, to be yeah. polite. That's a good way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing is is like this is like a a good and bad moment because it's like with Sony acquiring a third essentially or I guess the combined between the two of them they have a third that gives Sony some say in the games so maybe we get something maybe not Bloodborne but maybe a spiritual su successor I'm still convinced there'll be a Bloodborne too but everybody's like nope. no it'll never come if there's but not even going to be a remastered there's nothing Bloodborne coming I swear to God. I know you're just saying that because you're like, it hurts your soul. To think. I'm jaded. Do you know how jaded I am? Yes, I can tell. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, I think, I think it could come, especially like, this is like pushing more towards that. But since it's not like the full, like from software has not been completely acquired, it still leaves us open for stuff like games on PC and games on Xbox and stuff like that. Um, So hopefully we'll see like, we'll see some pretty cool stuff coming up. I, it's going to be a long while before we see anything from, from software. Um, mm -hmm. Like, I think we'll probably not see even like a trailer for a new game for another two or three years. Um, Cause even though that they're, they're rolling out of Elden ring, um, I'm sure that they have some people working on DLC for Elden ring. Yeah. Um, so they have yeah. to have at least a small team working on that. And even if the rest of the team has been pushed to a new game, let's pretend like, six months before Elden Ring released or something like that. Um, that's still only maybe a year into development on that new thing. So we've got quite some time before we even see anything from them. Um, so I think this is good timing on this. Uh, I do want to note um, Kadokawa is actually, they own a lot of stuff as well. Um, they, uh, they actually do a lot of anime. So I don't know if you've seen, there's like a swirly logo that you'll see at the beginning of anime. Um, okay. That's Kadokawa's logo as well. So that like I don't think I like knew Kadokawa ha uh, was the parent company for From Software. So that, that was a weird hmm, yep. moment. Well, they me. were, I, I don't know if they were always the parent company from Software, but I know they at least have been over the past few years. Yeah. Um, How are you guys feeling about this? I mean, for months over on Project X Talk, I've been saying I'm not scared of consolidation. I'm not scared of these companies buying out other things. And, and I'm not going to come over here and, and flip my script because it's Sony buying something. So, you know, as long as I, I always say this, as long as the ownership doesn't change the formula or try and get their fingers into what a studio is doing, I'm perfectly fine with it. Throw more money at it. Now you have a bigger backing to be able to create your games. I think, especially with From Software, people who buy stakes at From Software know what they're getting out of it. They know the formula is there. These developers are making incredible games that so many people love. I think it, it 
it just goes against everything that you would want to do uh, by trying to change up their formula. So I think with FromSoft, nothing's going to change. They're going to continue doing what they do. Now they just have more money backing them up. Uh, I think it's smart for Sony and Tencent to invest in FromSoft. It's clear that it's a very, very good developer and they're going to make a lot of money going forward. Uh, they make quality games and they have a huge established fan base. So it's a very good investment, I think. Uh, I do share some of the concerns with Tencent. Any Chinese developer, I think it last Project X talk, we talked about NetEase acquiring Quantic Dream. Um, you know, these uh, these Chinese companies aren't necessarily the best with ethics. They're not the best with working conditions. Um, but, you know, luckily FromSoft is based in Japan. I don't think anything's going to change with their, they have their own slew of problems in terms of working conditions. But uh, I don't yeah, think, absolutely. I don't think Tencent's going to change anything with them or any other company that they invest in. So I'm not scared of it. I think it's okay. If from software gets more money to develop even bigger and greater games, I'm here for it. So I don't know yeah. how they I don't know how they eclipse the scale of Elden Ring. Like it's a, it's almost like a Smash it's, Ultimate Breath yeah. of the Wild scenario where it's like, how do you like how do I say this? You can't you can't make it bigger in scope from here. You have to just make another well crafted game, but you can't have I feel like it's impossible to stop that kind the kind of ambition they put forward with Elden Ring. I don't know, because I mean, I remember the conversation around Sekiro when that won Game of the Year, and people right. are like, this is the yeah. most polished experience from software could ever make. How do you get better than this? And they mm -hmm. just, they keep proving us wrong. I mean, the technology just keeps expanding, and uh, I think going forward from Soft is, is probably going to open up the game to be more accessible. You know, we saw that already with Elden Ring, and mm -hmm. I think the more they open it up, the more game, the, the more people will come in and play these games. So, you know, See, from Soft's got something up their sleeve. The thing with Dark Souls games is it particularly like with the people that are designing the combat, they don't want more people playing the game. And I don't think right. that they meant to make build any accessibility into Elden Ring. They want people to not play their game. They don't care. That's why all of <laughs> more popular their Dark way. Souls, all it. of the Dark Souls games, all of the like the Bloodborne, all of that stuff, they have like a seep, like they teach you early on, like, hey, this is how you play the game. And they're like yep. slightly nice. But if you think about it, like like for example, in Dark Souls One, the asylum deal demon is just like a bunch of middle fingers, right? Like yeah. <laughs> so they they just don't care like who plays their game and in fact most people i think the percentages on people that continue through dark souls after that first boss i think it's only like 40 percent of players or something like that continue past that first boss wow, like it's like really? uh, it's the majority of players stop there so they really don't care because they're like <laughs> they're getting the sales anyways and then people just <laughs> yeah. stop playing their game That's so wild. yeah love them yeah. and we love it <laughs> oh absolutely absolutely yeah for sure i uh yeah, you guys really said it yourselves. Um, I think this this is fine, and ten cents, a, ten cents a little bit concerning, but so far so That's, good. Yeah, yeah. And also, what I didn't put this on the docket, but like you mentioned, Ethan, Quantic Dream, which is historically a Sony developer for titles like exclusives like Detroit Become Human, Beyond Two Souls, um, mm -hmm. was recently acquired by NetEase, which is. Um, Chinese-based company, yeah. So yep. the the acquisitions are still still in full swing here, and as we all know, the Activision acquisition by Xbox is currently being hashed on in regulators. So acquisitions ain't stopping, can't stop, won't stop nope. for a lot yeah. of these companies. So. I think with Tencent, the Tencent piece in particular is Tencent is kind of they've had like a couple of controversies in the past of kind of being like buttholes. So like they're pro Chinese government, if I recall correctly. Yeah, they're they're not. They kind of have to be. You know? They kind of have to be like. The, <laughs> yeah, the, of like, course. A lot, the reason a lot of people are worried about Tencent is by proxy that it's um, a conduit to con control by the Chinese government. Like in Guilty Gear, for example, you know, any mention of Taiwan, uh, Arc System Works tried to yep. had to go cut from the game because, or not had to, I guess. They did cut that from the game because China wouldn't let it be sold with or sorry. I'm not sure if it was China wouldn't let it be sold in that game, but they were being sympathetic to the Chinese government's assertion that Taiwan isn't a country by trying to cut that from the game to mm -hmm. I what I would assume is to advertise and um, sell the game in Chinese markets. But no, that type of reach by the Chinese government is what's concerning a lot of people about companies like Tencent and to a lesser extent companies like NetEase. But mm -hmm. yeah, I haven't seen Tencent do anything outrageously yeah. malicious yet to a game or property that they own or like they have large stakes in Epic, right? 
I haven't seen yeah. Epic go down under yet. So it's concerning. But as far as my experience with the hobby is concerned, it's not adversely affecting me yet. So, so I think the reason... Yeah. The reason I, we don't have to get super into this, but the reason that like it concerns me is that there were issues with Tencent and Riot specifically. Um, mm. So Riot Games was having some issues and they are either fully owned or partially owned by they have large Tencent. Stake, yeah. yeah. So um, so there was, I think, two or three years ago now, there was some drama there. Again, we don't have to get into all of that, but there was some drama with Tencent specifically um, and Riot. So that's okay. like where my concern comes from. I don't think it would really necessarily like, ha uh, luckily, I think that that those kinds of issues wouldn't interfere with like from software games, like from software games are not in the same realm at all um, mm -hmm. as like league and Valorant and stuff like that. Um, but that's just where my concern comes from. Yeah. And then, and then quickly going back to the consolidation discussion, um, I feel like every time new companies are acquired or stakes are bought, it feels like there's always new companies popping up. Mm -hmm. at the end of the day i mean let's look at I, one of the examples i always bring up is Haze, Haze Light studios the guys who made it takes two they've made two video games and one of them's already game won a game of the year award with it takes mm -hmm. two um so new studios are popping up everywhere we're seeing the indie scene growing exponentially um they've been doing incredible things oh, yeah. stray just for playstation fans stray just came out we see a lot of great indie titles coming out on game pass and you know those are new in, independent private yeah. studios so it these guys are popping up everywhere if people are ever concerned about acquisitions, if you just go to the PC market on Steam and you look at, you know, I would consider Stray what I call a triple I game. It's a heavily funded yep. indie experience or like a Hades would be oh, almost yeah. not an indie game with how much money that has. It's super giant. But like if you go into much more low budget indie games that are still excellent, like mm -hmm. Celeste or Stardew Valley that are, you know, inscription. Developed, developed by one guy <laughs> that, or inscription. So like there is so much independent game content to love, especially in the PC marketplace. Like, I love Dusk as listeners and some of you guys might know, which is an indie developed first person shooter ultra kill. I just bought from the same uh, indie co-op developer, New Blood Interactive are the ones who make it. Mm. So like there's always indie content for the types of games you enjoy. And that's yep. never going to change, even if Amazon and Google buy up Microsoft and sony and nintendo or something will oh, always no. have that independent <laughs> conduit to games so yeah that's always comforting knowing that in my opinion yeah but yeah so besides that uh brie reathen who wants to talk about twisted metal it's Ethan, all brie i know nothing no, about go. twisted metal i don't either i can read <laughs> it it's fine i'm not gonna read it because i know about it so you guys have oh it. god I, I can read it it's fine okay. um twisted metal season one has finished filming um one of the first sony franchises to be adapted into the film and tv show since their push for these projects over the past few years um writer and executive producer michael jonathan smith announced this on a twitter post quote even with lightning delays extreme heat and cars that wouldn't do as they're told <laughs> everyone worked as hard as they could to make sure twisted metal kicked as much as possible i think it's End quote. kicked as much ass as possible <laughs> and i just <laughs> okay, much and i just copied the uh quote wrong but yeah uh, okay yeah no worries and the show now is now entering post-production which may take some time but that's mm -hmm. pretty excited i hope twisted metal fans are excited about that but i just have literally never the closest i've gotten to twisted metal is i've like I know that there's a bunch of University of Utah alumni that worked on that, but that's about oh. as close as I know. <laughs> that's yeah, cool. you like seeing gameplay of the game, you know the premise that like it's a lot of cars going around with destruction and weapons on them and, and yeah, clowns or something. And, and the yeah, protagonist, I saw clowns. Sweet Tooth, Sweet Tooth, the crazy <laughs> clown who has his vehicle running around. If this is going to be Mad Max with clowns, I'm here for it. I'm absolutely here for it. I think it's not it's quite as open world as Mad Max, but it's like a destruction derby, wacky type of deal see Love but they it. the other thing that they could do with this and i it might be even like the more interesting route for me personally um is are they going to go like mad max kind of route or are they going to go like a horror experience kind of route mm. i don't think they could ever had a horror precedent way. they could they could also they want to get serious like the, the origin of sweet tooth i mean yeah he's also kind of like but he's like chaotic good whereas oh, the joker okay. clown mm. whereas like the joker is like a chaotic evil type of clown I see. Well, I don't know if Sweet Tooth is good, but like the destruction he causes is like for fun in context of the like the des destroying cars and kind of that oh, monster okay. truck type energy. Whereas the Joker is kind of out just to hurt, destroy people's lives for the sake of it. Sweet Tooth yeah. is more to just cause chaos because chaos is 
fun. Not necessarily because <laughs> chaos hurts things. Are um, any of you guys going to watch this show? I don't I think might. so, but Sam will watch it and I'll uh, berate him for watching it and ask him about it. What, yeah, what I, I think like, is cool, cool about this, though, is it really shows how deep the well is of Sony IPs that they could go mm -hmm. in and make shows. And with this new dedication oh, yeah. to making shows, I'm excited because I've never heard of Twisted Metal. And I'm sure there's plenty of other IPs that I've awesome. never heard of that they can, you know, reach in their bag and pull out and say, we're going to make a TV show about it. So, uh, you know, it's exciting to, to see them commit to it. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, I love seeing you as a as a new green Sony fan, Ethan. <laughs> so you're, you're naive to so many things so that. I, you can be my punching bag for discoverability. <laughs> exactly. It'll be fun. <laughs> yeah, but awesome. So as we move out of our major news stories for the week, we now move into our section of the show called no, um, called Limitless, where we discuss mm. topics that we find interesting and that aren't necessarily news related. They could be topical They to news or recent events in gaming. They could not be, but it's just fun things that we wanted to address. So starting off for this week, are there any game awards that we're willing to make a bet on now? Yeah. Maybe sure. we should wait for Sam for this. He might have some insight. Actually, we, let's reapproach this when Sam gets on, but and ask his opinion on next week. But Ethan, mm -hmm. any game award winners that you are willing to make a bet on now? I don't think this just this doesn't have to be necessarily just game of the year. Yeah. But it There's all those be, small awards as all well. those small awards that no one cares about where Jeff Keeley can get up and give a participation trophy for his marketing show but uh what do you think Ethan? <laughs> i i mean game of the year i i know you said it doesn't have to be that but it's going to be elden ring i yeah. i don't see any you think okay you think god of war won't do it no, no. i think god of war is going to win best narrative oh, okay okay good call out god of war yeah i could see god of war winning best narrative for sure yeah because best anything narrative like is a huge award as well yeah. Um, and so it's like God of War deserves a game of the year award, but I don't think it's going to get it because Elden Ring also deserves it. And Elden Ring is like a huge experience. I mean, I'm not saying that God of War can't like, I don't think that God of War is out of the game yet mm -hmm. since, especially since we haven't really seen it, but just like from how expansive Elden Ring is in lore and gameplay and every single aspect of that game. I, I, I just have no idea. Who could yeah. beat that? Maybe if, like, if Breath of the Wild two had come out at the same time as Elden Ring or like the same mm. year, then maybe we would have like a conversation about like, oh, there's these two huge games. Like, what do we do? Yeah. Kind of thing, right? But Elden or Elden Ring is like, well, God of War is just more of like a tailored experience and narrative experience, and not mm. as accessible as Elden Ring. Oh, I'd beg to differ. I think God of War would be way more accessible. I don't mean Elden accessible Ring. in playing. I mean accessible like literally able to play mm. yeah, I like still, on consoles i still think elden ring is less accessible <laughs> think god, god we're riding around what makes oh wait are you saying that because it came out it's, yeah what makes it came elden out ring on more pc accessible? and ps5 and xbox whereas yeah. god of war is only going to be coming oh, right. out oh, okay, on see what you're saying. Okay. maybe mm. pc we don't know that i thought I you meant think. from a playability perspective no not being... playability okay i think yeah. playability wise god of war is definitely more accessible but as far as like literally how many players we can have on the game I think yeah. that Elden Ring is way yeah, more. That's true. And I want to make another prediction more out of spite than anything. <laughs> Halo nice. Infinite is going to receive a maximum of one nomination and it's not going to win it. Halo Infinite doesn't deserve a damn thing at the end of this oh year. Oh my God. I'm ashamed of 343 Studios. If you want to check out me and Kevin ranting about Halo Infinite, I go check out the episode, last yeah. uh, the Project X talk. We were not happy. Wow. I was very flustered. <laughs> but the Xbox switches sides and he's now yeah, Sony. Halo, Halo Infinite is going to be snubbed to hell, and that needs to send a message to 343. I don't even want to see previews of its new season there. I don't even oh want to see an God. advertisement for it. Jeff Keeley, shut it down. Stop him. <laughs> what if you see Matt? What if you see a cereal box with Master Chief on it? Are you gonna buy the cereal box? Yes, I'll buy the cereal box okay, for the, yeah, okay, for the Captain Crunch skin. I well, will like, do it. It's like if you're gonna buy a regular cereal box or like a Halo cereal box, like yeah, you might as well buy the Halo, right? Right. Exactly. I remember. I remember when Halo Infinite started marketing. Of course, they delayed it for a year, but I used to drink a lot of Monster, the energy drink, and okay. literally they had Master Chief on Monster cans a year before Halo Infinite released. <laughs> I would be buying Monster cans for six months with Halo Master Chief on it, and I had saved up a bunch of tabs for like XP points. It was great. <laughs> you know why it was probably there a year before release? Because I bet you when Microsoft signed that contract for Chief to be on the can, mm -hmm. that was when they originally didn't delay it for a whole year. Yep. And it was, it was going to come of... out December it was because of Craig. 2020. Yeah, <laughs> it was all because of Craig. Of Craig. <laughs> um, wow. 
do you so a couple of questions to add on to this one do you think stray is going to win any awards if so what awards would you say i feel like stray deserves at least one award it's going to be nominated for best indie title i absolutely mm -hmm. think it'll be in the in what the other running. indie titles have come out this year dinkum is a big one a memoir blue um memoir blue is as dusk is as dusk falls considered indie i no? don't i don't think I, so i want to say no if it, if that is considered an indie then damn that's gonna win but <laughs> Let me look that up real quick. While you it, guys it, talk. it reeks of indie, but really isn't an indie game. Well, yeah, it's a very high budget indie game, if it's anything. It was developed by Interior Night, which is a private company who has made nothing but As Dust Falls. This was their first game. So I don't know if okay, so you consider that an indie or not. I don't know. like what the 40 company. employees. Oh, yeah, that might be an indie then. Might, might be. I don't think Stray will win Best Indie, but it will get nominated. Oh, it is considered an indie. Okay. Okay. Yep. As Dust Falls probably going to win that award. Sorry. <laughs> no, yeah, I was just like, I just like, as much as Stray deserves awards, like absolutely fantastic game. I just like the categories that would be nominated for, it's going to run into other games. Oh, I do want to talk about, yeah. Brianna, you mentioned best narrative. As Dust mm -hmm. Falls is probably going to be in contention. And I'm wondering, because God, God of War might win it out. God of War is a continuation of an already existing story. Yeah. As Does Falls is a very novel See, experience. It might and this be the, is voted on by writers. So it might be the better winner for that award, but you gotta understand that the voters for here are kind of game journalists who already have a meta mm -hmm. of games that mm -hmm. they prefer. I don't know. We saw last year it takes two win. I never thought it takes two was gonna win game of the year. That baffled yeah. me. So All these right, guys maybe. have gone out and done some weird stuff before. Did Horizon come out this year? Yeah, Forbidden Horizon. West came out and got totally eclipsed by Elden Ring. So did Dying Light yeah. 2. <laughs> Dying Light 2 is not going to get nothing. Yeah, but I was when we were talking earlier about Elden Ring Game of the Year, I was going to mention Horizon Forbidden West just got totally overshadowed. Yeah, the, this happened with yeah. the original game of Breath of the Wild in Zero Dawn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, have you played a good amount of it, Bree? Forbidden West? I no, I never beat the first one, so I have to like. Like, cause it's been literally, cause I played it when it came out. Okay. Um, so I, I have to play, I have the first one downloaded on my PlayStation right now. So do I, I never played it. I need it. to play them too. Yeah. So I'm like, the other one I'm wondering, like, I guess these are just like the awards that I like the best is like best narrative, um, like game of the year. And then also the mm -hmm. other one that I always love is like best soundtrack, but I yes. don't think I've really heard. I mean, Elden Ring did have a really good soundtrack, but I just don't think it's going to win best soundtrack. Um, God of War might. Bear McCreary's doing it again. It might win it. So that's what I'm wondering. Like, I, I haven't heard, like, Horizon Forbidden West soundtrack mm -hmm. at all. I don't know. Like, I don't know. So I guess I'm just, like, interested in, like, who's going to win that as well. Because mm -hmm. with Best Soundtrack, that's kind of open. Like, it's not to just anybody, your yeah. that's, that's winning that. So How was Sifu's oh, soundtrack? Because that kind of slapped. What about Midnight Fight Express? Kevin was talking about that. Oh, the right. Synthwave soundtrack. I have listened to a bit of it. It's very, very cool. I don't see it winning, like, a, a yeah. end of yeah, year award, though. Okay. I'm looking through all the games right now to think about the different soundtracks. So while you guys talk, I'll pop in with the soundtrack. Okay. All good. Sounds good. Yeah, I just like God. I feel like so sad for her. I literally haven't heard anything about Forbidden West, like at all. Like whether it's good, bad, ugly, mm -hmm. beautiful. I've heard nothing besides mm -hmm. before the game came out. So it just it really did just absolutely completely get engulfed by Elden Ring. So. Yeah, it's a victim. It's a Titanfall. Another Titanfall situation for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Oh, so. best family game? I, they, that's a category, right? Best family game? I it takes so. two one that last year. Lego Star Wars Skywalker Saga. Yeah. That's mm, definitely going to win that. I think that's a good bet for sure. I, I'm sure. I think we're going to do a full predict because we're going to do a live react of the game awards for sure yeah for sure and i feel I like was... we're going to have a combo episode for all the predictions so that'll be interesting once we okay. actually have all the stuff up and we can just go through and and hopefully yeah, yeah for sure i was just curious like like if we have any like awards because i knew for sure like I, well i feel like personally elden ring is gonna absolutely like yeah murder the game awards mm -hmm. so if elden ring didn't come out I, I could easily see god of war ragnarok winning game of the year but it's also running up against the deadline of like, uh oh, 
camera's gone <laughs> my camera is gone <laughs> oh no so, while you guys are talking i'll plug my camera back in <laughs> but i was gonna say god of war ragnarok gets very close to that november deadline for games for the 2020 uh-huh. two game awards for this year but mm-hmm. i think it'll still make the cutoff oh it was a horizon yeah. did nothing that came out last november um mm-hmm. and it yeah but yeah that gives journalists a solid month to play it before they mm-hmm. cast their votes yeah well, you guys are talking else coming out in camera. october What's hitting what? in October? October? I feel like there's a, a horror game that was coming out in October. Let's check. I, well, Callisto Protocol is coming out in December. That won't hit uh, yeah. in time. I'm looking through October now. October um, oh, a Plague Tale Requiem is coming out ah, in October. So that's a big drop. A yeah, that's a big drop for everyone. And uh, that will be on PlayStation 5. So everybody will be able to play that. I thought it was just going to be. It's going to be on Game Pass. That's what I'm thinking of. Uh, yeah. The new Ghostbusters game is coming out in October for anyone is interested. Is that going to be there. any good? I don't know. <laughs> Gotham Knights is hitting in October. Wow, October is going to be busy. Uh, Persona 5 Royal is coming to Game Pass in October so that, and PlayStation 5, so that's going to be busy. Uh, Bayonetta 3 is getting released in October on the Switch. Mo- Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 is dropping. Oh, my goodness. And, <laughs> and the Resident Evil Village expansion. There's a lot coming out in October, so that's going to add a lot of different names to the to the yeah. different award nominations. So that'll be well, interesting. Yeah, my camera think... isn't cooperating, guys. So I'm just going to go okay. cameraless for the rest of the show. Yeah, but... that's fine. I can pretend I'll see. I can see your face. <laughs> um, look how good Taylor looks right now. You're right. I know. <laughs> Better than um, ever. <laughs> Um, I think honestly, I I've never played a Bayonetta game, but I would imagine that Bayonetta has some solid music. So I'd almost wonder if that's going to be. Oh, oh it has great it music. Does. Yeah, love it's Bayonetta. It's playable on PC on most platforms, um, or all platforms really: Nintendo, Xbox, PlayStation, PC. So it's definitely the first game's at least worth a shot. The second mm. game is a Wii U Switch exclusive, and the third, well, unless you emulate it on. CMU on PC. Um, and the third game will be a Switch exclusive, at least for now. Mm. Yeah. And then the horror game you might have been thinking of, Brianna, is Scorn. That's that really fleshy looking Ew, game. Ew, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think. <laughs> I'll play it that day. What are you kidding? That's going to be crazy. You know what? I'm so excited. <laughs> All I'll be doing is playing Resident Evil Village again with that third oh, person mode. Oh so my God. Great. I'm going to fucking gobble that up. We should do a spoiler cast for it, Brianna. We're going to do a spoiler cast for it. Let's do it. Village is like genuinely one of my favorite games everybody like okay i get it the narrative was so disgustingly cheesy like (laughs) just awful but man i loved the gameplay it was exactly what i wanted it was exactly what i wanted out of that game Mm -hmm. it was great so good i loved it um do you want me to take over the next question taylor since you're dealing with your camera we just kind of pick and choose here Um, yeah we can pick and choose maybe like what do you guys think one more do you want to do the bottom one uh i feel like what about one that's more applicable to the whole panel okay let's do the second or third one then yeah okay. ethan you pick second or third because you're the guest uh let's, let's do any books you would want to see converted into a video okay. game i want I to have... start with brianna because okay. i know she's a huge book nerd and we got something cooking in the background for y'all related to books uh that's just a little teaser right there so brianna mm-hmm. take it away what, what do you think yep. um i think that the obvious answer for me is going to be Mistborn. Um, the magic system in that game would just do so well in a video game, and it would be yeah. so, it would be so cool. So, for anybody that isn't familiar with Mistborn, um, I won't go too into the details, but basically, you play like this thieving crew, or like you would play a thieving crew. Um, main character is a girl named Vin. She's so cool. But the magic system is called, the main magic system is called Allomancy, where you basically drink metals and use the metals Mm. to burn different powers. Um, So there's like stuff that like makes you stronger. There's stuff that like lets you hear things better, see things further away, that kind of thing. So you would almost have like a management system where you're like burning this different, these different metals. And sometimes Mm -hmm. you have to burn the metals at this together at the same time. But the world is so cool. Like the kind of setting that you're in is that there's always ash falling from the sky. Um, There's nothing green. Literally they didn't like, like there's nothing green. Um, That's like naturally Mm. occurs in nature. Like it's like a very dark and like gritty setting and it would just do so well as a video game. I, yeah, that's what I'm going to answer. I think I'm, I'm going to go a little more basic with mine. I'm going to say song of ice and fire. Um, Mm. I am a massive Mm 
fan of that series of Game of Thrones. I haven't read all the books. I've, yep. I've skimmed through a couple. It's It would take years to read all the books. It feels like there's so many of them, and they're each like 700 pages. Um, but I just love the whole overworld of the Song of Ice and Fire, all the, the political situations that are going on, the different factions within that world. I think if we see a fleshed out uh, RPG game, in this world, it would absolutely kill it. Um, I'm, I'm thinking of something on along the lines of like Mountain Blade Warband, but obviously way more polished and and possibly focusing on one single person over yep. the shoulder, third person. Um, you know, any any game in that 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 lets you deal with geopolitical situations. Kingdom Come Deliverance is another game that I was going to mention mind. that that yeah. was a a very very detailed simulator of uh, medieval. I think it was either Poland or Romania or somewhere in Eastern Europe. Uh, but that they, they had mechanics where you could marry into families and, and join royal courts and stuff like that. Um, and I think a game in that setting with Game of Thrones would absolutely kill it, especially if it's done right. Um, I think we've, we're starting to see a precedent of massive book series turn into games. Obviously, we're getting Hogwarts Legacy, which I'm really yep. excited about. That just throws you... It's not following the adventures of Harry Potter. It's just throwing you into the world of of harry potter so that's really exciting and i would love to see the same treatment for the song of ice and fire yeah so i just looked it up kingdom come deliverance takes place in bohemia, bohemia. which is in the czech republic czech so republic. Okay. it's like really central europe just it's yep. just east of germany um yeah. very cool yeah so i guess for i don't read many books because i'm a weenie <laughs> but <laughs> Of the books that I have read that I know of, I'm going to cheat a little bit on a couple fronts. One would be maybe the the Lightning Thief would be cool as a game. Mm -hmm. It used to be big back like 10, 15 years ago. I already got a film, but it'd be cool. They're oh, releasing be, a Disney okay. Plus TV show as well, so it would be a good time for a video game. Oh, really? Okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe Lightning Thief just because it would be fun building those powers in someone mm -hmm. normal who isn't necessarily uh, Kratos. Yeah, from the Greek gods, and also, I was gonna say Dune, but then we had the THQ Nordic presentation recently where they're making a Dune MMO. I'd like to see Dune as a single player, a real game, action adventure <laughs> experience. Right? Either yeah. maybe I don't know. Either it doesn't have to be first person or third person. Just a single player, maybe RPG in the Dune universe as. Uh, some character there it does not necessarily have to be the book's protagonist, but just somewhere in that universe where it's not an MMO and just a bite-sized single-player experience would be really cool. Um, but yeah, I think that's. And I'm honestly game. more surprised. I'm I'm really surprised that more studios haven't jumped at trying to make games out of these because your lore is set, your your world is built, you know, the backstories are built, you got central characters. All you need to do is develop the game around it. So it's really surprising to see that people aren't jumping at that opportunity. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Like we haven't had a dedicated Lord of the Rings game that follows the movies and the books plot. Right. We've had games in the Lord of the Rings universe, there, yeah. like Middle Earth, Shadow of Mordor and Shadow of War. But um, maybe, I might be wrong, but I don't think we've had. We had modern... really, I think uh, the what was the third Lord of the Rings? Not the Lego games. Let me let me also. No, there was one for the 360 way back in the day that followed the main line of one of the movies it was basically a movie adaptation because i remember because i loved doing the battles of helm helms deep over and over and over oh, again that's great it was awesome uh, but it was a very old game they haven't made one in a very long time gotcha i played that game a lot that's the one where you can ride those elephants right yes the elephant yep yeah, okay oh, so there we go. it's really fun I played that a lot, a lot. Actually, yeah, I, did too. I like the, that's like bringing up a lot of memories. <laughs> yeah, I'll look it up real quick while uh, you guys. That's so that. good. Um, Taylor, do you read comics at all? Nope. Well, mm. I don't read comics, but I keep up somewhat with superhero stuff. Like, I'm not an MCU nerd, but like, I love watching comic book movies occasionally, like the Batman, and I'm gonna watch the Joker sequel, and I'm gonna watch, mm. um whatever next Wolverine comes out and I'll, and I'll see Black Panther too. So I like comics, but I'm not, I don't read comics. Okay. Yeah. I was the only reason I was going to ask is because like, we could also convert this book into other comics that you'd want to see adapted. Oh, Oh, I'd love to see a so Well, it's already been developed. If we had this conversation two years ago, I would have said, I would love to see a, so a Wolverine game, but Insomniac mm -hmm. has one in development that I can't, cannot be more excited for. Wolverine is my favorite superhero with, I think Ghost Rider coming in second. And I yeah. just, 
I'm ecstatic. Logan's my favorite superhero movie, so mm-hmm. really can't wait. I have I have the game for us, Brianna. The, okay. and, and I really recommend everyone go play this. It's a very old game, but it's okay. absolutely cool. amazing. The Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King. It was for PC, PlayStation 2, Game Boy Advance, GameCube, Xbox, uh, mobile, and what is OS X? What is that? What is that Max. Mean? Mac That's OS. Mac OS X, okay. yeah. Yeah, so it, I think I played it on the PlayStation 2 back in the mm-hmm. day. Like I said, that was my only PlayStation console. I absolutely went crazy yeah like as we're talking about it i'm like remembering different scenes from the game like there's yep. that part where you're like playing as like aragorn and there's like the ghosts coming oh, yeah. out and, and you yeah. have to fight all the wraiths on top of the uh that little uh tower as um the hobbit it's just so so fun so many great yeah, moments that, that game. game was so good i don't know if it would hold up i'm like scared to go look the cutscenes are literally one for one with the with the movie like when they oh, do the cutscenes so cool. it's actually movie scenes that they've rendered into 3d and it's really really cool mm. definitely definitely recommend it what for people time. wow that's awesome cool yeah. nice good so time. yeah with that said guys uh, we're gonna move out to the out the outroduction here Mm. Thank you all so much for listening and had a great time having you on, Ethan, this last minute excursion. <laughs> and it was just really great to see a newcomer to the ecosystem, let alone a friend and a fellow podcaster on our under the Sea of the Game Media banner. Come on mm-hmm. and take a visit. And Sam, please be on next week. We don't like you. No, I'm just kidding. We don't like you. No, no, no. no. But, oh, um, we didn't even follow our rule of talking, talking shit when they're missing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. When Sam's not here, we need to talk shit about him. So oh, okay. he has blonde glasses. hair he's a big dumb doo-doo head and he has <laughs> we already said he has glasses <laughs> um uh, i, I don't feel know bad. i feel like we should be talking about me because it was kind of my fault <laughs> <laughs> we can talk about this after the show guys but thank, <laughs> thank you all so much for listening and you can find us at youtube.com um at save the game media and on twitter.com at save game media don't mm-hmm. forget to check out our Discord if you want to hang out. Links are in the description. And uh, Bree, where can people find you? Um, well, you can find Taylor not on Twitter. Just going to get that I, out. I, I <laughs> talked about yourself, not about I me. I know. <laughs> I wanted to get it out of the way. <laughs> okay. I did take it. Um, you can find me at Fabulist, Brianna. Um, I am like literally nine people away from having 50 uh, followers affiliate. On, Ooh. on Twitch. Yep. So that would make me an affiliate. Get that follow. So if you haven't had the time, you can literally, I won't even be upset if you turn the notifications off. <laughs> if you just go and follow me, I'm so close. I already have the time requirements. I have all the other requirements wow. fulfilled, I believe. Wow. Um, so I, like literally just nine followers and I can start earning money all off right. of wow. it. All right, Give listeners. Prime subs. Let's where's go. the listener who's going to make nine Gmail accounts? <laughs> <laughs> Don't we already have nine Gmail accounts for Save the Game right? Media? <laughs> we should Actually, just have all of our Twitch brand accounts. accounts. For those two, there's two emails right there we could use. Yeah. No limits. All the brand accounts are just going to come. Out. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be great. It was very close. Awesome. Ethan, where can people find you? They can find me at White Cedar One on Twitter and PSN or Gravy Three Four Four Eight on Xbox. Thank you guys for having me on. This was a lot of fun. Look forward to the next time. Awesome. Thank you guys. And until next time. Bye-bye. Peace. Bye.